Oh, good morning, everyone. Hello. Whoa. Let's try that. Is that any better or not better or whatever? Is that okay? Okay. Well, anyway, good morning. I'm Jim Smith, and I'll be the literature this morning. Uh, if there's any anyone here for the first time or haven't been here for a while, we would certainly welcome you into the lounge at the uh, end of the service, and we do have a gift bag there for you, and there's plenty of refreshments for everyone, so we'd love to have all of you come back and just sit and chit-chat and see what's going on in Enon. And speaking of that, uh, in Enon yesterday they had a, a pizza program down uh, uh, down by Rite Aid, and it was really wonderful. You know, we have a, a pretty neat community where, where uh, we're small, but there's an awful lot going on. And so, you know, if you had an opportunity to go down there and meet some folks and and have a burger or some pizza. It was really, really very, very nice. Music was fantastic. So we have a great community. We should be very proud of it. I'm going to introduce myself the way they introduce themselves at the annual conference. Carol Watchorn, Laity, Miami Valley District. <laughs> that's who I am. Um, I didn't ever get to say that up there, but that's how people introduce themselves when they want to, I need to hand this to you, when they want to talk. Uh, conference is over. Uh, we had a wonderful week. I didn't get there until Monday night due to the fact that my poor hubby had a toothache and we drove all the way up there Sunday and had to drive all the way back. And then I drove up again Monday night. So it was a good time. Conference is always so exhilarating, so inspiring, so much fun. And uh, we all got back safely Thursday evening. So we had a good conference next week. Kathy Ramp and myself and Pastor Jan will give you a full report. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, take a moment to uh, draw the curtain between our worldly and spiritual lives, and we're going to have the prelude. Maybe. have the scripture in unison, please. Let the Lord's glory last forever. Let the Lord rejoice in all he has made. He has only to look at the earth and its shape. God just touches the mountain and they erupt in smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. 
I will sing praises to my God while I am still alive. Let my praise be pleasing to Him. I am rejoicing in the Lord. Thank you. 
this morning is from the book of Acts. A sound like a strong wind. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then, when they heard one after another their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, Aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Aegis, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, belonging to Siren, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make heads or tails of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joke. They're jumped. They're, they are drunk on cheap wine. Now, Peter speaks up. He says, that's when Peter stood up and backed by the other eleven, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy and also your daughters. Your young men will see visions. Your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I will pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both. And they prophesy, I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous. And whoever calls out for help to me, God will be saved. Word of God for the people of God. So today is the birthday of the church, and we um, look at this wonderful scripture and we're reminded what has happened, and we have no idea. I think that the recent tornadoes and the winds and all the destruction, but the force of that wind would be a little bit of the power of God. Just a little bit of idea. It wouldn't have been exactly like that, but it would give us that, that idea of what that might be like. And so, um, I want you to see a little bit of the book, of the chapter before we got, get to this point. So you are reminded what is happening and some key things that are happening right before this takes place um, on Pentecost. The disciples are meeting and they ate meals together. Jesus tells them that they were on no account to leave Jerusalem, but they must wait for what the Father promised. That waiting is so important. You must wait. Don't leave Jerusalem. Wait for what the Father has promised. There will be seasons in your life that God is going to place upon you to wait. Wait. This is not the season when people are good at waiting. If you've been in any kind of... They're not good at waiting in lines. They're not always good at waiting in traffic. People don't like to wait. God said, Jesus tells them, wait, don't go, don't leave Jerusalem. I want you to wait for what God the Father has promised and what he has promised you. A few weeks ago, I think I shared you part of a story about our older son, Christopher, and their need for a vehicle, and they were looking and they were praying and they were, were just kind of waiting for the Lord to, to guide them, and, and they had a specific vehicle in mind as far as make was concerned. And they saw one they really, really liked that worked for them, they thought, but it was too expensive. 
So they didn't agree to buy it because it would stretch them beyond what they were supposed to be. So they were good stewards. They waited. And Christopher saw in the Facebook advertisements for things for sale the same year of vehicle for sale. And so he called, and it was in a different town. And so he called the person. He went to see it. And he's, he's just sort of curious because it looks like the very same vehicle he liked that wasn't that was too expensive that he had turned down. And so he asked the gentleman about the vehicle, and he said, um, tell me about this, this vehicle. And the man says, I'm selling it for my friend. And my friend has now gotten a different car, and that came from his mom, and so he's for sure he wants to sell it. And this vehicle is now $1,000 less than it had been when Chris first looked at it, and he knew it was the same vehicle when he opened the door. And he said, by chance, does it belong to this person? And the man said, yes. Well, in the negotiation period, in the talking to the the actual owner, they dropped it a couple more thousand dollars, so it was in a price range where Christopher and Krista could purchase the car. So the one that they liked the best, the one they thought would fit their family the best, but it was too expensive, they waited. And in the process of waiting, God provided exactly what they needed and what they were hoping for. We are sometimes in seasons where we have to wait on the Lord. Now, sometimes we wait because we don't want to do what the Lord has told us to do. And we put ourselves on a pause and we we just wait because maybe the Lord will change his mind. That's not the same kind of waiting. That's a different waiting, and that might be procrastination. And so there's a difference. But this is particularly that they're told to wait. And you wait for the Father and what he has He has promised. And so it says, um, John baptized in water. And you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. When you are baptized, it is you are baptized with water. But the Holy Spirit is the, evoked upon you. So it's an action of the Holy Spirit, not just the water. It's the action of God working through the Holy Spirit in you. And so the scripture says in John in Acts 1 that John baptized in water, and you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And soon, what you'll get is the Holy Spirit. And so what you'll get will, will be the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, I think we skipped a slide. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all over Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the world. These were his last words. And as they watched, he was taken up and disappeared in a cloud. So Jesus gives his last words. Something's going to happen, and it is going to be something that is very big. You need to wait. You will know when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will know. And then you are to be my witnesses, not only here where you are, but all over the world. You are to be my witnesses, and Jesus disappears in a cloud. The day of ascension has taken place. Jesus ascends. He tells us in the scripture he will never abandon us or orphan us, and so he has given us the Holy Spirit. Wait, the Holy Spirit comes. We live in that power of the Holy Spirit today. Jesus will return. We do not know the hour. We do not know the day. We do not know the year. But the scripture tells us that we are to be ready for when he returns. And so this isn't just a little thing. This is a huge thing that changes us. It has the ability, the Holy Spirit, to change us, to transform us, to make us new. And that we are called to be his witnesses um, in the world. And so things happened on this day as we read the the scripture of the morning of the Acts um, 2 scripture. That there was strong wind, unbelievable wind, as the Holy Spirit comes and fills the people They, The people that were there, they come running, they hear all this sound, and they come running And they find that their language is being spoken in. Their mother language, they can understand what the disciples are saying. And they're very confused, as you heard the scripture this morning. These are just the the Galileans. What are they doing? They must be drunk. 
You know, what other excuses there that they're, they're able to speak in these, these languages, they must be drunk. But that isn't at all like what happened. And so there's languages, it's like wildfire that has set upon. I don't think we can just even get our heads around exactly what transpired on that day. But that same power of that same Holy Spirit is still present in us. That same Holy Spirit is still present, just as powerful as it ever was. What happens is that we we don't call on, we don't engage, we don't ask the Lord to transform us. We aren't seeking Him, and it just and we just kind of have a dormant Holy Spirit. Kind of like we talked a few weeks ago about the Holy Spirit being a little bit like pouring chocolate syrup into milk and it goes to the bottom, unless we stir it up. We stir it up and we allow it to infiltrate the entire glass of milk so that it's all chocolate. We allow the Holy Spirit to to build in us and to grow in us. And you may say, how does that happen? It happens when we are seeking the Lord, when we are on our knees, when we are praying, when we are seeking God. It isn't out of fashion. It isn't old-fashioned. It isn't old school. It is very good wisdom to seek the Lord for what we might need, to seek the Lord to help us grow, to seek his word, which is the Bible, not just to look at it from afar, but to open it, to read those passages, maybe a verse at a time, and just pray over them, speak them out loud, ask God, what does he have for you for this day? What is it he's trying to tell you? It is basic things, but it is needed things. It's what does the transforming and the renewing It is when churches become alive and amazing things happen when we are seeking God and we are seeking the Holy Spirit to fill us and to transform us and to renew us. Things happen. Things happened on this day of Pentecost. The disciples were waiting for what God was going to do. What was going to come, they had no idea. But they knew Jesus. They knew they could trust him. They knew that his word was true. They knew that they needed to follow his directions. And as you see Peter, you begin to see this boldness arise in Peter. Peter's the one who who denied Jesus three times. Peter's the one that had such um, boldness to get out of the boat. Sometimes we don't have the boldness to get out of the boat, but he got out of the boat He was able to walk on the water, but then he took his eyes off Jesus and he began to sink. That's what happens to us. We have boldness for a period of time, and then we take our eyes off of the master, and we begin to sink. Keep our eyes on the master, and now Peter has been filled with the Holy Spirit. He has a new boldness, a boldness that he does not lose as he witnesses what he has seen, what has happened, as he preaches boldly. To those that have gathered, Peter has been changed. Peter has been transformed. And so we are, are, um, we, we are reminded how much, you know, it had to be a very loud day. Just imagine when you were gathered in a large space and everybody's speaking in a different tongue. But you hear. You hear the one you need to hear that you understand. That's what happened on that day. The Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit came, and the Holy Spirit did not leave. And so that that is a, a space for us to be reminded that the Holy Spirit did not go anywhere. The Holy Spirit is still here. So we have to ask questions in why isn't the things that God has promised us, why do not they not happen? I think they don't happen when we don't rest in the Lord. When we don't seek him enough, when we don't pray enough, when we are not vigilant to be persistent in our prayers, when we aren't vigilant to be reading our scriptures, and not just reading words, but living them out, claiming them, claiming them as ours, taking those words and living them out. And so the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit is here, and we are challenged that... This is a celebration of something wondrous that transpired. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power through the Holy Spirit. 
And we need to be claimers of that power. Because through that power, we will be changed. Through that power, Enon United Methodist Church will be changed. And through that power, if we allow it to happen, our community will be changed. A revival could be born. And it happens through the power of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. But God, we are reminded in these scriptures that you came. You came as you promised. You came and dwelt amongst the people who believed in you. You came as part of God. You are part of the Trinity. You dwell in each one of us that has claimed and has asked for your, our sins to be, um, has confessed our sins and asked you to forgive them and asked you to dwell in us. We have that power. We are, have the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, may we not take that for granted. May we call upon your name. May we call upon you to transform us and change us. May we call upon you as our church to lean into you and to pray to you and to count on you to do the changing of us so that we can be all you've called us to be. Lord God, you are an amazing God. We pray that you send that Holy Spirit into us. We know that the enemy has been defeated. It has been defeated by your name. We praise you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.